Hey everybody, um, today I'm going to showcase the first of a number of videos that will come out over the next uh, couple of months, couple of years, not sure how, it'll, uh, how long it will run, but um, I've been doing the Detroit Diaries for a little under a year, almost a year now, uh, kind of chronicling my own story as I've journeyed towards the city of Detroit, and uh, those will continue to come out. Um, for sure. But I also wanted to share the stories of some of the people that I know who also feel um, like they're supposed to be in the city. Um, and a lot of people when they think about ministry or people who are studying for ministry, um, that that's the only viable means of kind of um, being the hands and feet of Jesus um, or telling people about Jesus. Like that's, that's the job, you know, that's the job description. Uh, when you are a pastor, preacher, teacher, that kind of thing. Um, and this first story that I'm going to showcase uh, is my, my buddy Tim Holdridge, who, who does happen to be the campus pastor for uh, Church in the City, uh, Church in the Wild, uh, Woodside, Detroit. Um, and kind of, uh, you're going to hear a little bit about his heart about why he is where he is uh, doing what he's doing and why we are doing what we're doing. But um, stories beyond that are going to showcase people who um, are social workers and doctors and lawyers and musicians and artists who feel um, called to the city, this inexplicable call, like this is where I'm supposed to be. I mean, I work um, for a major telecommunications company. Um, yeah, I'm studying for ministry and maybe one day I'll be in full-time vocational ministry, but at the, at the moment, um, that's not what I do as my job. And, um, so may I be the first to communicate that, uh, you can follow Jesus to the city and you don't necessarily have to carry a pulpit with you. Um, so, uh, this first story is Tim Holdridge. And I hope that uh, you enjoy what you hear because he's got a lot of really cool things to say. And keep tuning in because I'm going to have a lot more people um, and a lot more stories to share in the coming weeks and months. Talk to you later. Bye. What's up, man? Are you doing a video? Oh, yeah, why not? Yo, man, this is Tim. We're in downtown Detroit. I'm with Calvin. Midtown. Midtown. No, you're saying. Well, city. Midtown, heading towards downtown with my good friend, Calvin Moore, whom I love dearly. He's moved to the city. God's doing amazing things here. And uh, I'm excited more and more to see how Calvin's going to be a part of that. So it's good stuff. We cool. love it. We love Detroit. We love God. So what's been. Uh, I'm excited to be here. What's. Yeah. You know, I've done a lot of blogs about uh, being down here so far and, and whatnot. What's been your your experience so far? Where'd you come from? I, mean, I came from actually upstate New York and uh, came actually from a small town, but I've always had kind of a... I've always loved the city life. I've loved kind of the culture, style, um, the people in a big city. And... Um, so it's kind of cool to be able to to be a part of this mm -hmm. um, and see how God's kind of brought me down here. And so you moved. Oh, hello. City driving. Gotta love that. Yeah. Um, so you moved from a condo in the suburbs of what Troy, Michigan area, and you moved down here. And so you've been in Michigan for a little while, right? So because you were doing worship at a our larger. Oh my goodness. Yeah. People in this city don't know how to drive. <laughs> the red lights. You know, red, light. yeah, so, uh, red lights in Detroit are just suggestions, right? <laughs> it's right. It's like, if I can make it through, I'm going to make it. Uh, we're driving past uh, the Bonstell Theater, which is Wayne State's, uh, I want to say graduate student theater. Right? Don't don't quote me on that. could be undergrad. Yeah. But uh, I just moved down here. You've been here for a little while. What's been your experience in the, in the city since moving here? Um, there's just such a beauty, I think, in rawness of the people in life down here. People aren't afraid to, like, just let you see them in their need. And they're not afraid to tell you what they think about life and people and you and whether they like you or not. Um, <laughs> but I love that because, it, to me, it just gives us a great opportunity to step into those places and get to know those people and just love them to Jesus. And... Uh, you know, every day is a new adventure. I just love, there's such an open canvas here. 
Um, every day there's just new things happening. A lot of new startups, new businesses, a lot of entrepreneurs that are just dreaming. And this is just such a, I don't know, just a fertile ground for just a lot of incredible ideas and culture to be formed. Whereas most of the time in big cities, there's so much already put together in structures that are set in place. So it's harder for people to kind of make their idea a reality. But down here, I feel like it's a lot more um, a possibility in such a quick amount of time. So um, even for our church, I feel that same way as well. I just feel like God's opened doors and given us opportunity to meet people um, and and figure out where we're going to be and just what our calling is and our passion, you know, to the city. So 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 we're arguably in uh, or we're in one of the most arguably controversial cities people have called it the failed american dream mm -hmm. um what do you think about people who have uh, or how do you respond uh when even well-meaning people write off the yeah. city that god has called us to love yeah that to me what it is is it's actually a beautiful picture of the lives of people like how many people in life have had failed dreams um had an amazing life ahead of them and something came in um tragedy um, failure, whatever it is, that's kind of just turned their world upside down and now they're like, okay, what do we make of it? And t that's why I, I heard someone say the other day, the whole world is watching Detroit to just see how they're going to kind of rise up from this. And I feel like it's an awesome um, stage for even a church and for the people of God to show the world how much they can be a part of the redemption and uh, renewal within the city. So when I, when I hear that from people, I'm like, that's why I love to be here. Um, because every day there are things happening within this city that are historical. Yes, exactly, just like that. Yes, we're going back to the future. <laughs> there, it's gonna change, it's gonna change the course of not only Detroit, but the whole world. And so to me, it gives me hope and excitement. I would much rather be in a city that is on the verge and every day you're wondering what's going to happen next as opposed to being in a big city where there's really nothing to worry about and everyone's got their own lives and nobody cares uh here everyone has to make it by being together and and pulling together and so it the community within the city is so much different than in another um some of the other bigger cities in, in america so we're from <laughs> Under, oh, is that a big Olga's chicken? Oh my yeah, goodness! Right oh, Olga's there, kitchen. Ew. Yeah, gross. <laughs> Food poisoning central people. Um, but uh, so we're from a predominantly suburban church. Um, most. Uh, this is our first church below eight mile. For those of you listening, uh, eight mile is more than a movie. It's actually the dividing racial line uh, in the in the city between the city and the That's suburbs right. here after the riots uh, in the '60s and '70s. Um, but our church is predominantly suburban, and now we're here uh, in the environs of, of a city. So what has it been like, uh, not just personally, you already talked about you personally moving into the city. What's it been like, uh, what's it been like for our church to, to move into the city? That's a really good question. I, um, we're constantly flexing and growing and learning um, what that looks like um, for our city. Um, there's a lot of young entrepreneurs and, and just tech startups, people that are a part of that that are moving to the city, but we're trying to think through like how it is that we can become a part of the fabric of what's going on here in the city um, in an urban structure and um, what does that mean? What does that mean for us? So um, I think one of the ways that we're really connecting is just through being a part of the community like we recently adopted a park, um, Cass Park, um, and are looking forward to uh, basically just seeing the opportunities to build relationships through that and really connect um, to the city on a deeper level through that, especially within our neighborhood, because um, our neighborhood is really kind of more the Cass Corridor between, between Midtown and Downtown. So I think that's a big part of it. And really the, the bigger part of it is through our people within our body um, that we're reaching out and letting people know about our community and that we're just not a place where people come just to have church, but that we are the church every day, 
every week. We're trying to like get into the lives of people and let them know how much they love Jesus and and how much you know they mean to Jesus. Um, so I think that's th those are kind of the big right now for us. We're trying to just help our people understand that concept and start to live out what's happening on Sunday through the rest of the week. Um, because our church, because we're renting a facility and we only have it for five hours a, a week on Sundays, uh, that, that really pushes our church out into the streets and gives us really a cool opportunity um, to be the church um, more than just doing church. So I'm, I'm excited to see kind of what, how God's going to use that within our, our community and within the city as well. Cool. How do you feel about being on camera? Um, it's just so exciting, uh, you know, especially when you're driving. <laughs> um, We're getting the cool shots of the city, everybody. <laughs> Look at this, how cool we are. Look, it's the GM building, everybody. Woo! Cool. Don't get See? sick. It's artsy. It's artsy <laughs> what we're doing. We're Christian hipsters. Yeah, man. Well, I can't be a hipster because I'm black, but... Uh, no, he's starting a new culture. <laughs> I am. I am starting a new culture, but... No. Yeah, it's it's good, though. It's It's fun. Um, it's hard. A lot of people are like, oh, it's the city. It's so, so exciting. Like, you must just have the time of your life. But, no, there's a lot of challenges that we face. And um, My phone is blowing up yeah. right now. Calvin's blowing up. I'm sorry, everybody. He's a popular man. Phone. You know, what's crazy is I, I moved into my apartment, and I didn't think about, you know, different things like, you know, walking friends out to their car at night because it's not like, hey, see you later, and they walk out my front door, and they just yeah. go out to their car in my driveway like it's always been, yeah. or taking groceries upstairs like my my apartment has a uh, mm. has a cart like a shopping cart i don't know where they got it from yep. i guess i never returned it but we have uh, that too yeah um uh, it's just so weird to to have little things i didn't even think of in in regards to to moving to the city and people are friendly and then some people are suspicious uh, like one lady didn't want to get on the elevator with me and uh, uh and then uh, other people are like they're they're chatty cathy's what floor do you live on oh cool i'm having a, i got invited to a super bowl party my first night uh, which is kind of cool. That's great. Um, so, uh, yeah, for me, it's kind of been a, a crazy, crazy journey into the city as well. So it's kind of cool to to get the perspective. Hey, that's Canada, everybody. Yeah. That's America's hat over there. <laughs> America's hat. Uh, if you can see it in the distance. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got a lot of Canadian. We got people from Canada coming to our church. I think yeah. a guy just got baptized. Yes, so our first couple weeks ago. First international baptizee. He, he um, comes, he takes the tunnel. Um, over every Sunday, and uh, we're actually going to go over there and uh, go to a hockey game over in Windsor, which I'm excited about. That's yeah. going to be really cool to be able to. I hesitate to say that they know hockey over there because yeah. we're a hockey town. That's right. But uh, whoa, they yeah, are yeah, they are fucking it. They are. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Again, Detroit drivers, man. We are aggressive. They tell you to drive aggressively in our there's state. Nothing like, uh, there's nothing like this city, man. This so, is so cool. So we're on, good. We, we're on uh, Jefferson Avenue right now, right? Yeah, Jefferson. It definitely takes a wild person to live here, but it's it's more than worth it. You know what? That's the funny thing. There's that song, "Church, No Church in the Wild, but I believe that uh, Church in the City, Woodside, Detroit, is Church in the Wild. Definitely. To, to be sure. I definitely, mean, man. And we... That's the way I would never want it any other way. I like my, my personality fits uh, this type of ministry, and I'm drawn to rawness, to brokenness, um, to people just being who they are and not holding anything back. And so, for this, to me, this place is just um, I don't know, it's just an exciting world of possibility. Um, beyond just kind of the, the devastation and destruction that you see. Because God's doing incredible things here. Things are rising up. God's um, changing people's hearts. He's working in government. Um, there's a lot of things that are happening here that are going to change what we see in Detroit over the next five, ten years even. Um, so, yeah, I just I love it. I'm, I'm a blessed man. I'm blessed to be with this man that's holding the camera. Yep. And blessed uh, to be able to serve uh, God together here in the city, man. It's, it's such an honor uh, and a privilege.